Nerf Pig? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, funniest YouTuber in the Dead by Daylight community right here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be here all week. That's an overused joke or anything. I never saw any of the Saw movies. <laughs> Saw the saw. I'll be here all week. That's not true. I think I hazily remember bits and pieces of the first movie because my dad was watching it in the same room as me while I was reading a book. All I remember is, I want to play a game. And the reveal that the Jigsaw Killer was actually some old dude with cancer trying to teach life lessons or something. I don't know. I do know one thing, though. It's got to be a right pain in the ass to continuously come up with different traps movie after movie. It's no wonder they took like a three or five year break at one point. I mean, even I get creatively bankrupt from time to time. Do you know how exhausting it is to come up with a different way to make fun of my fat belly, bald head, and small dick while simultaneously trying to convince you all that I'm worthy of love when I'm actually not? By the way, it's not the jiggle gut, chrome dome, or microscopic hole finder that makes me unworthy of love. It's the experiments that I keep in my basement. Shut up down there! But regardless, I think it's good when it came to making a Saw chapter that Behavior chose Amanda, the pig mask wearing assistant to Jigsaw himself. I mean, what the fuck was Jigsaw gonna do? Stare at the survivors all match until every gin was done, then chase them down with some mediocre power that might be good in some situations if the survivors have trouble navigating basic loops and spent all match shoving crayons up their nose while the player base begs and begs for Behavior to improve his power to not be so mind-numbingly slow and after you have an impact on the game. Oh, hey, Myers, what are you doing here? The pig has two powers. Ambush, which allows her to crouch while moving at an oddly slow 3.6 movement speed, according to the wiki, which is slower than survivors, and can charge up an ambush attack, which is a fast lunge that goes 6.9 movement speed as, to the, as opposed to the normal 5.0, and lasts for two seconds over the normal one. The ambush is... Fine, I guess. I really don't understand why the crouch movement isn't 4.0 or 4.2 at the very least. I guess it's because they don't want you to be able to do it in chase, but like, I don't personally see anything wrong with that. I feel like giving her a chase power isn't that game breaking, especially seeing as how I'm about to rip apart her god awful secondary power. The reverse bear trap, or as sane people call them, the head traps or party hats if you're a troll and unfunny. Yeah, I said it. Come at me, bitches. Okay, so this is about to get really technical and boring, but I can't take the piss unless I break it all down, so bear with me. Basically, at the beginning of the game, five boxes spawn in. When you down a survivor, you can place a head trap on them before picking them up. You start the game with four head traps, one for each survivor, which is not nearly enough, but with some truly awful add-ons, you can increase this number to five or six, and we'll tackle that later. Now for the complicated, boring part. When you spawn into the game, a number correlating to the number of traps you bring is taken and then split among the traps. Each trap equates to a factor of three. The standard four traps mean you have a pool of 12 to choose from. Five traps equals 15, six equals 18, and if you bring the red letter add-on, you reduce your traps to two, so you have a pool of six. From there, every time you place a trap, that trap then has a number assigned to it from the pool. It can be one search or four searches, but never five. The number is unknown to both the survivor and the killer until the survivor actually gets the trap off of their head. Basically, it seems like each box you search is a predetermined box, but instead is a predetermined number of boxes that you much search. Jesus, even I'm falling asleep reading this. So, um, Nerf Pig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Each box takes 12 seconds to search without add-ons, and a head trap takes 150 seconds or two and a half minutes to blow up. This seems incredibly stupid, and that's because it is. The idea here is that factoring in travel time, the survivor should almost die to the head trap, assuming they don't get it on the, for their first or second search. But because searches can be the first or second, then chances are only one survivor is ever going to narrowly avoid getting their head exploded. Now, the cool thing is, is if the exit gates are open, the survivors with an active head trap cannot leave the trial or they'll die. Wait, active? I hear you innocently ask. Yes, active. See, unlike our friend the trapper, head traps don't actually do anything until a generator pops, thus activating the head traps. But you can't just wait for a generator to pop and then go around placing active head traps. No, it, the only tra head traps that activate are the ones currently in play. The fun part about this is that without a certain add-on, the survivors can see the aura of the pig boxes even when the head trap isn't active. So all that math we did earlier to determine if two and a half minute timer is enough to be an actual threat, 
Yet most of the time it isn't because there will be countless occasions where survivors will just get the head traps off without it even activating. This is especially infuriating because it turns your lethal side power into a pathetic, barely effective slowdown because unless at least three survivors have head traps on at one time, which won't happen unless you bring the Eerie add-on that has its own issues I'll get to later. You see, Pig is an M1 killer. Okay, so you're going to have trouble regardless. M1 killers in this game suffer a lot from various mechanics to some of the more broken survivor perks like made for this. It's very, very difficult for M1 killers to get a step ahead. And it's very often the reason that M1 killers with no chase power are very often tossed to the wayside and considered to be lower than B tier in almost every instances. So very often you'll down some jackass, mount them, give them a fashion accessory, hook them, go M way your one to another survivor, get pallet stun 75 times get that person down and by the time you've completed the process with them the other jackass has their head trap off three gens have been completed and you can bet your sweet ass that the most recent gen popped right before you were able to slam down another head trap so now you won't get an activation on this one either also as a quick aside i don't take issue with the following but head, active head trap timers do not decrease while the survivor is in chase on the ground or on a hook this is a good thing because otherwise head traps would be way too powerful and unfair so we're going to actually keep that whenever we're going through and making all the changes. There's so many other things that I can mention, like in order for most of Pig's kit to work even relatively in any sort of effective way, you have to rely on her add-ons. In fact, I'd call Pig one of the most add-on reliant killers in the game. It's actually pathetic. Her slowdown isn't even as effective as Pinhead, and his slowdown theoretically on paper has far less map-wide pressure compared to dear old Amanda here. Okay, so how do we fix all of this? Well, it's going to get really deep, so grab your snorkel and cave diving buddy and let's get into it. To start, let's tackle the ambush. Move the crouch speed up to a 4.1 base, slightly faster than the survivor, but not fast enough that you can catch them without the ambush. Also, let the ambush break pallets similar to how Billy, Bubba, and Demo can break pallets with their abilities. It's technically faster at one second breaking speed, but it's still enough of a slowdown for the survivor to get some distance. If we have too much trouble with it, we could move it up to 1.5 or something like that, but I still think that giving the ambush the inherent ability to break pallets would give a Amanda a lot more chase power in order to actually utilize her head traps in an effective way. Before we get to the head traps, I want to tell you guys, I spent ages thinking about this. Right before my two month hiatus, I legit had a notepad that I kept in my car while I was working and writing different ideas while on break. I went through so many variations, different buffs and balance changes. I tossed around concepts like make the head traps always active, reduce their timer to 90 seconds and so much more. And after all this work, here's what I came up with. Step one, base kit should be six head traps. Four is too small of a number and is often useless. Like I said earlier, because Amanda has no real power outside of her ambush, her chase potential is too weak. And it can take a long while to put a head trap on someone, which usually means you're wasting a trap because you want to get one as down as soon as possible. Number two, head traps auto activate in the end game, but the end game timer is slowed by 25% while a head trap is in place. Because of the fact that the head traps only activate when a gen pops, sometimes you find yourself at the end of a game with one or two head traps and they might as well be decoration at that point. Very similar to the problem I mentioned in my Freddy video, a power that turns off the end game is fucking stupid. The reason I think it should slow down the end game timer though is because we are going to change box requirements soon and I think it would be silly to just get free wins because you had head traps some people at the end game. That being said, if a 25% slowdown isn't enough, we could reasonably bump it to 40 maybe 50 in a pinch, but I think 35 might actually be the sweet spot. The point of this is to create a powerful enough end game without being necessarily a free win. Three, all head traps, regardless of when and where they were placed, take four searches to get off. I'm sorry, but I simply do not see the godforsaken point of letting survivors get a head trap off after one or two searches. It's simply stupid. I don't care if it fits the saw theme to have it at a random chance. In game balance, adding this weird-ass RNG concept just ruins pig's potential. We can keep five boxes on the map, fucking bump it to six if you really want to, I guess, to prevent body blocking. And in fact, I would even say you could turn off pig collision near pig boxes to let survivors search them when she's attempting to body block. Actually, as I'm writing this, I think the, to further prevent box camping, search progress on that specific box should be saved if a pig downs you. Downs, not injures, downs you while you're searching the box. This should hopefully prove to be fair. Four, 
Head traps now activate not only when a gin is completed, but also if a totem is cleansed. I think adding an additional objective could lead to more fluid matches where there's always an additional risk involved, and I also personally think Hex Pig would be funny as fuck. Number five. Make the rule number two add-on base kit. I see no godforsaken reason why the survivors should get the chance to get pig traps off before they are active. It's just a further weakness for no apparent reason. And this change further removes her reliancy on add-ons. Six, make searching boxes take 15 seconds and increase the skill check chance from 80% to just a solid one every five seconds. This makes searching boxes have more risk and to compensate, we can raise the head trap timer to 180 seconds. And finally, Seven, make interlocking razor base kit. If you miss a skill check while injured, you get deep wounded. With the power all caught up, it's time to take a stronger look at add-ons. Since I made rule number two base kit, I want to start with this one. The new effect will now read, when a head trap becomes active, pig box auras will not reveal themselves for five seconds. It's not very powerful, but can be a fun factor in delaying the search. Interlocking Razor now makes the survivor scream and reveal their location for one second when they miss a skill check while searching a pig box. Jigsaw's sketch is somehow worse than its green counterpart, Jigsaw's annotated plan. So let's change its second effect. While it still increases your available head traps by one, it will now increase the timer of head traps by 25 seconds, but forces survivors to search all five boxes to get the trap off. Finally, we have the eerie add-ons. And while these aren't the worst eerie add-ons in the game, I say as I make a mental note to add Pyramid Head to the list of killers that need fixing, they are still pretty bad. With the now increased head traps I've given in this rework, Amanda's letter will now remove three head traps from your starting pool, but on top of showing auras when you're crouched, the add-on now charges the ambush 15% faster. For the videotape, I think having all the survivors start with head trap is great, but it removes them from your starting pool and its current state, and I don't think that should be the case. To counterbalance keeping all your traps though, I think that increasing the trap, the pop timer of all head traps in this trial to 200 seconds is a fine trade-off. And that's the video, guys. I'm sorry this took so long, and to that one person who keeps asking about a trickster video, it's next on my how to fix docket, but I need my normal two to three video break before I tackle that. All in all, I hope this seems reasonable to you guys, and I feel like with each of these, I'm getting better and better in recognizing how to counterbalance instead of giving straight buffs or weak killers. Maybe someday I'll revisit my trapper video and do it not so shit. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.